Welcome back to the channel, my friends. Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man, and today we're taking a look at this week's Sunday preview. This video is sponsored by CMO Games. More on that later. Sunday preview Horrors Descend in Warcry Nightmare Quest. More valiant heroes will brave the nightmares realms of the Gnarlwood in search of mystical artifacts next week. As the Stormcast Eternals pit their god wrought might against the atavistic degenerates of the Flesh Eater Court. Before we get into the next expansion for Warkai, let's have a look at what else is coming this week. So there is a little video if you want to check that out, but we'll take a look at the full release schedule. Alright, so first we have a Warcry Nightmare Quest. The battle for the Ravening Ruin continues, as a band of heroic huntsmen venture into the Narwood on a quest to save the mortal realms. Or so they think. In reality, the royal beast slayers of the Flesh Eater Courts are little more than raving monsters, whose deluded antics threaten the stability of Gur. A danger too great for the Stormcast Eternals to ignore. So we have the new box set, the final expansion of the season for Warcry, and this one is Nightmare Quest. And I have to say, while it's definitely cool and it's new, I'm very, very disappointed in this set. It felt like the entire season that we were like building up towards like this super cool Seraphon crashed spaceship and these awesome ruins and really got excited for the terrain to come. And instead, it basically just was recycled the entire time over with like a couple extra little bits and bobs to make it different and now we see that instead of getting like super cool new terrain ruins that everybody was hoping expecting wishing for uh we basically just got a recycled realmscape engine so is it cool yes but apparently i got way ahead of myself on the excitement level for what i thought was coming this season the warbands have been really cool the terrain is okay there's definitely some cool pieces in it but just like what we saw in kill team it just felt like they just recycled way too much of the same stuff if i'm not mistaken if you picked up each of the sets like i did and you pick this one up as well you're going to end up with five of the same terrain sprue because you got two in the first set and then one in each of the expansion sprues is the little scatter terrain stuff cool yes but five sets of the exact same terrain is just ridiculous and it's the same way with a couple of the trees. And then they just gave us like some different little bits to make them look different. So, so I do really like this set. But in the end, I have to say it was a disappointment. The terrain was just not what I was expecting. And I think a lot of people, well, I know a lot of people have voiced their opinions to me and feel the same way. So while I am excited for this and the final installment in the Warcry season, I'm definitely a little disappointed in where they took the terrain. To combat such savage ghouls, Sigmar sends his quester Soulsworn, wandering champions of the Stormhost, who though few in numbers, fight with the strength of hundreds of lesser mortals. So here we see the new Stormcast Eternals, and honestly I have to say I really like this warband. It feels like a sort of light version of some other Stormcast characters. So we see one is carrying that uh, little soul thing, we have one down here holding the artifact, and then we have one with the dual sword, one with the dual hammer, one with a dual axe and then one is dual wielding swords so pretty neat i think they have a cool look to them and i do like that they were able to jam six of them in there because we see that they've made all of the more traditional war cry war bands like the chaos ones and stuff 10 models in general so i think for six stormcast to go up against 10 you're still gonna have like a fun game it's where you start getting outnumbered two to one is where you might struggle a bit and then here we have the flesh eater quartz war band so these look pretty cool overall. There's definitely like some regular ghouls and then a couple more like fancy ones. And then we have the actual leader. And then these sort of like beast things. They're kind of like gorilla ghouls. Pretty cool. I think they're neat. I like them better than the traditional ghoul models. And they'll definitely make a welcome addition to the Flesh Eater Courts. As honestly the range is a little bit stale. So very cool. Definitely looking forward to these. I want to see a couple more angles on these big guys. Because they look a little bit derpy, but I feel like we've only seen them from like the same angle. And guys like this are super unique. This guy's got like the dagger. I mean, these guys are more like basic ghouls, but some of these other guys are pretty awesome. So definitely a fan of both warbands. Alongside these two complete warbands, Nightmare Quest contains a full complement of Narwood scenery, including a massive half-ruined Realm Shaper engine and a selection of twisted Narlokes. Combined with the 64-page warband tome, double-sided game board, and reference cards, this set is the perfect way to expand your Warcry experience. 
Now a quick message from today's sponsor. CMO Games has been selling Games Workshop products online for over 20 years. They carry the full line of Games Workshop products, including Warhammer 40,000, Age of Sigmar, Necromunda, Blood Bowl, Paint Tools, and more. Almost all Games Workshop products are priced at 15% off MSRP. CMO Games takes pre-orders for most Games Workshop products released at their earliest date possible. 12.01 a.m. on Saturday, they go live. Most of these pre-order products are also priced at 15% off MSRP. CMO Games offer free shipping in the U.S. 48 with an order of $50 or more. Their customer service is top-notch and they ship most orders within 24 hours. Visit CMOGames.com using the affiliate link in the description and let them know that you heard about CMO Games from Warhammer Man. Now, back to the video. And then we have the Asgurgian True Blades, And this was one of the warbands from the previous expansion. The vampire ascetics of the Asgurgian True Blades are precision and discipline incarnate. Suppressing their hunger to attain enlightenment in ways of combat. The standalone warband of eight multi part plastic miniatures, previously only available in the Bloodhunt box set, is a brutally effective martial force that shows off an entirely different perspective of the Soul Blight Grave Lords and comes with the fighter cards and ability cards you need to deploy them right onto the battlefield. This is a really cool warband. I'm definitely a fan. I like the lore behind them and everything, and they obviously look very cool. And next we have the Claws of Karanak. Where the Askurgan True Blades resist the call of mortal blood, the claws of Karnak revel in it. As devotees of the corn and worshippers of the savage flesh hounds, they revel in the carnage of open battle and aim to turn the jungles of Gur into their own personal charnel house. No, that isn't a flesh hound. The Hound of Wrath is simply a warrior who really, really wishes he were one. And his seven companions are entirely happy to let him do his thing. If wanton slaughter and rivers of blood are the way you roll, the claws of Karnak are for you. So this is a really cool warband right here. Definitely very, very unique. Add a lot to the range. I am a big fan of the overall aesthetic and idea of these guys. Really, really cool. And definitely outside of your typical like cookie cutter kind of corn models that we normally see in the range. So definitely a fan of these. Very, very cool. Both these warbands are absolutely awesome. And then next we've got a little something for Horus Heresy from Forge World. Classic tanks from the Ford World range will return to the Horus Heresy at Games Workshop Web Store, upgraded with new plastic spons and sprues that make it easier than ever to add weapon variety to your armored companies. So it is very important to understand that these are still the same old Forge World kits. They are 100% made of resin, but now some of the accessories are in plastic instead. So you have some more options for your like sprues and upgrade turrets, etc. But the actual kit itself is still fully resin it's only some of the actual weapon sprues that have been replaced so that you can have more options and also the plastic from the new range the super heavy legion transport known as the mastodon is a mighty beast that keeps whole platoons of space marines safe within its hull while the Fellblade falchion and glaive ferry supremely powerful weapons to the front while soaking up return fire the Mastodon will also soon be getting an updated data sheet to allow all the options available on the new Sponson Sprue, such as Volkite Culverins and Heavy Bolters. So here we can see the Heavy Bolters and some of the other weapons, some of the new sprues that have been added to the Horus Heresy range, and they just swapped out for the old resin stuff that would have been there. Architur Bombards are dedicated artillery tanks, mounting either a Spicula rocket system, a Graviton Charge Cannon, or a Morbus Heavy Bombard. Despite their role as artillery, they still pack a pair of sponsons for more diverse work. Each kit includes resin autocannons, plus the full spread of plastic glass cannons, heavy flamers, heavy bolters, and Volkite culverins. Finally, the Javelin Landspeeder also gets a new weapon option and an updated data sheet to give more versatile loadouts to the speed-hungry commanders. While the Democles Command Rhino Upgrade Kit lets you upgrade a regular plastic Deimos Pattern Rhino in a mobile command base with powerful sensor suites, all of these kits contain both resin and plastic components and can be taken by all loyalist and traitor legions. So yeah, some more options to expand now that the plastic bits are available. And we'll take a look at some Black Library stuff, even though we know it's probably already sold out. Uh, so next we have Blight Slayer. The legendary Gotarek adventures continue in Blight Slayer by Richard Strachan. As the Doradin Slayer saves a blasphemous warrior priest from the gallows and earns a life debt, he neither wants nor needs. Nevertheless, Amara Fidelis is determined to return the favor, and their pair soon find themselves caught up in a sorcerous plot that, should it succeed, would plunge the mortal realms into the hellscape of Nurgle's garden. Lightsayer will be available to pre-order this Saturday in hardback. And we also have Prince Mesa, Guy Haley's tale of an exiled elven prince 
Scorned by the crime of loving a human, returns to the Black Library in paperback. Prince Mesa follows the eponymous nomad's quest to return his paramour from the grip of death, a journey that will take him into the hostile lands of Shaish and earn the ire of Nagash himself, who jealously guards every last soul that crosses into his realm. And finally we have White Dwarf 488. The saga of the Herald of Misery comes to a close with a final battle in White Dwarf's Ark of Omen campaign. As the Tome Keepers and Blood Angels make a final desperate push to reach the center of the accursed Space Hulk, Warsmith Kazagra awaits. And those unlucky enough to be caught on board this Ark will need to contend with the new unstable structure tiles included in this issue. So we have Free Inside Boarding Action's Unstable Structure Tiles. A little mini campaign for Age of Sigmar, new rules for Warcry, new rules and lore for Lionel Johnson, the Primarch of the Dark Angels. As well as a conclusion to the epic narrative campaign, you'll find all of your favorite hobby content from the battle reports to painting guides, as well as brand new lore surrounding the return of Lionel Johnson. And as if one mighty hero of legend weren't enough, the serial Gromandrel adventure continues with another short story of the White Bearded Ancestor. So yeah, that is it for this week's pre-order preview. I do have to say I'm excited for Nightmare Quest. Although I'm a little bit disappointed with the actual terrain, it is still cool and the warbands are very neat as well. Hopefully Games Workshop actually receives and recognizes enough feedback from this season uh, with Kill Team and also Warcry that they can understand it's not going to be acceptable going forward to just pack all the same terrain into four boxes and then expect people to buy those four boxes. I think specifically for Kill Team and Warcry where there's a very limited player base the last thing Games Workshop wants to do is start eliminating those players or customers because they're just too redundant in their releases. So if they did two releases with very similar terrain and some extra sprues, and then they did two more expansions with different terrain that was still related, uh, I think that would be much, much better. And people wouldn't feel like skipping over a big box set because it was a lot of the same stuff they got in the last big box set. And this is definitely the feeling that I'm getting from all kinds of people throughout Warcry and Kill Team as well. So as always, let me know what you think down below. The meat trees from Warcry are not that popular of terrain. I actually don't mind them. I think they're cool. I like the idea of the skulls and everything like that. It's just, there's just way too many of the same stuff. Maybe if it was something different, like what we saw with the Kill Team walls and everything, people will feel different about it. But to tell you the truth, I felt exactly the same with Warcry and Kill Team this season. The Warbands and the Kill Teams were awesome. The story and the books and the missions and the setting was awesome. But it was just far too redundant when it came to the actual terrain. So I think if Games Workshop is willing to take people's feedback and make some adjustments going forward... I actually think that after a completion of a season now for Warcry and Kill Team, that if they can get together like the product and supply issues and they can alter these sets a little bit so they're just a little less redundant, honestly, I think going forward, I'm okay with the seasons. So let me know what you guys think down below. Always like to hear back from you. Special thanks, as always, to CMO Games for sponsoring the video. Check them out to save 15% on your Warhammer items. That's it for today. Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man, and I am really excited for Nightmare Quest. And I'm out of here.